Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a little unnerving to do this. No pressure, right? Uh, this morning, I wanted to be able to cover part two of, uh, of this Great Reset. Uh, it is in itself called The Great Reset. Uh, and it's interesting to go back just a little bit and to be able to consider what happened um, with World War I. Uh, ultimately, at the end of World War I, uh, there was a, a push for the something called the League of Nations. And of course, at that point, Congress wasn't ready to give up its sovereignty like it was years later or like it is now. Um, and so they said no. And so the League of Nations uh, was not something that the United States involved itself in. Well, fast forward to, um, to World War II, uh, the war to end all wars. Uh, there was a huge push for the United Nations to be able to make sure that we didn't have such global atrocities again. As if most people aren't seeing a pattern, we certainly do. Now, of course, you have the uh, Ukraine-Russia incident and a variety of other instances that only empower NATO, which help really um, solidify the things that I'm saying that hopefully will become clear, uh, if not already, by the end of this series. So uh, basically what was happening is that um, that by the end of World War II, America was uh, stable. Um, we were triumphant. We were, um, you know, we were the superpower. There was really nothing to upset this idea of Pax Americana, I guess they called it. Uh, and we had certain traumatic incidences, the Cuban Missile Crisis, the assassination of President Kennedy, uh, and the 9-11 attacks. Otherwise, you know, America was, you know, everybody was pretty happy to be American at that time. Um, and there was really no reason to think that um, our dominance wouldn't continue, right? Because, you know, anything ne negative can't happen in America. But just three years later, it was difficult not to view the future as one of unimaginable peril, danger, and probable catastrophe. With global disease and treatments offered as cures and the future monetary stability questionable at best, foreign policies that have led to war um, and energy policies that have instead of making energy less expensive, it has become more expensive and scarce to boot. We can add to that things like environmental policies that are now making food shortages and water shortages and property shortages inevitable. So basically what I'm gathering from this is that it looks nothing more than a globally coordinated nature of failures. I would say it was even intentional in what used to be called conspiracy. And so these disasters look like they're deliberately caused from the policies being advocated and the policies differ in their essential character from the policies before. You know, Thomas Jefferson in 1809 basically stated that the the purpose of government was the care and human life and happiness and not their destruction. It is the first and only legitimate object of good government. Now, most people in government will say, oh, well, the government's just to keep people safe. Well, it depends on what you call safe. If you're talking about, you know, the government defining bad people um, and then arresting them, um, violating their oath and violating the Constitution and violating their conscience, then I would say maybe that's probably safe. But is incarcerating them really safe? And is it really their job to be able to keep people safe? And again, I'd like to go over this again because it's hugely important. Thomas Jefferson basically said that the core of traditional Americanist approach for government in 1809 was the care what and the essence of good government was the care of human life and happiness and not their destruction. That's their first and only legitimate means of good government. So it doesn't arbitrarily put the power of government um, uh, to remove the power from the people and empower government to be able to keep us safe. No, that's not our job. Freedom many, many times is not safe. If you can jump off of a bridge with a parachute, is that safe? Well, the United Nations is going to make it to where you can't under their three E's, which is a, a, a topic for a different time.
If you want to wear a bicycle without a helmet, is that um, can that be unsafe? Well, it probably can. What about a motorcycle? What about race cars? What about all of these different things? Well, if the government's job was really to be able to keep people safe, it would be to remove them from any harm, not just harm that has come upon them earlier. Uh, and basically what that means is we're moving into an area of what they call preemptive crime, where they can, if, and also the three E's, I think it's called, that even if something appears to be dangerous, but isn't, and these people um, believe that it's dangerous, they will prevent you from doing it. So it's very, very important that people that are in government offices and you holding government, govern, holding your government accountable, understand the essence of good government is the care of human life and happiness and not their destruction. Um, I Very few people that I know understand that, and I think it's important to talk about that. But the broader range of policies are designed to tear down the key institutions of our American Republic. Um, there was a James George Jatras that pointed out that the it, it's almost the policy of destruction in 21, 2021, where he says that COVID has all of the appearance of a controlled demolition. Now, most of us know this, though, don't we? So the point of the series that I'm trying to share with you is to be able to help share small tidbits with other people to help them understand what it looks like when you line up all the dots like I'm attempting to do now and like many of us have attempted to do for some time. Um, we're also seeing the implosion of cohesion in the United States. You can see division, riots, hatred, and it's all for the purpose of ushering in this new system. It's as if the world's governments decided to unleash the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Pestilence, war, famine, and conquest. Now, this article is going to go into depth about what each one of those is so that you can understand its frame of reference and consider that um, on your own. But to, to suppose that there is no, that the war now is just of flesh and blood and it's not of the darkness um, that the Bible talks about is extremely short-sighted. It isn't to say that if you don't want to believe in God that I'm somehow against you. I'm not. What I'm helping you understand, or I'm trying to help you understand, is that rights don't come from the government. Rights come from God. And if you don't believe in God, then how can you believe that your rights are unalienable or bestowed upon you upon the Creator Himself? So... As we continue on here, we go through and we say that the COVID hysteria and subsequent vax mania can stand for pestilence. The U.S. proxy war against Russia, um, the higher commodity price, the state's dictates will cause famine in poor countries. As for the fourth horseman conquest, that's best translated into state power. Casey concluded, we're in for tough times. The four horsemen are saddling up. So um, when we go into pestilence, um, was COVID by accident or was it handled accidentally? And there was little about COVID apparently that was accidental. From the beginning, the natural crossover from the animal pathogen coming from bats and how common does this actually happen is not something that happens very commonly at all. Six in 10 human cases of infectious disease arise from animal transmission. These so-called zoo Nautic pathogens transmitted to humans from animals are found globally. Best explanation for the emergence of SARS-CoV-2 uh, was the zoonotic, zoonotic crossover. Still, there were reasons to doubt this in the animal origin, though likely remained unconfirmed. Factors that make this an artificial man-made origin more likely include the United States was funding gain-of-function research on suspiciously similar coronavirus, Dr. Fauci said almost prophetically he worried about the unregulated laboratories and come to find out they were being funded. Now we're starting to find out that these some of these laboratories are actually in Ukraine, which gives the United States motive to defend Ukraine from Russia. Clearly, the U.S. government and Dr. Fauci knew that the gain of function was concerning, but while Fauci did, uh, uh, encouraged the U.S. scientists to pause their GOF studies. Voucher Offshore paused research on China in 2021. He gave a new grant um, to Peter 
DASIC EcoHealth Alliance for Influenza Research in 2021, gave another new grant to DASIC for SARS research in China, and he partnered with who? The Wuhan Institute of Virology. The other important thing to remember is the important scientific evaluations cast serious doubt on the idea of natural origin. Of course, there was the article that came out by The Lancet, and the report by quote says, no independent, transparent, or science-based investigation has been carried out regarding bioengineering of SARS-like viruses that has underway before the outbreak of COVID-19. Independent researchers have not yet investigated the U.S. laboratories engaged in the laboratory manipulation of sars COVID-like viruses, nor have they investigated the details of the laboratory research that has been underway in Wuhan. The NIH has resisted disclosing details to the research, providing extensive redacted information, and it really smells like there's a cover-up. When you think about all of this, and the government has more excuses than they do answers, that should be something that would concern every single American. The fact that they all they have is excuses and they want to redact information and they want to make sure that they keep us in the dark and that somehow we should just trust our government um, is a recipe for absolute disaster. And so uh, we believe that something is clearly wrong and obvious examples of malfeasance. The sick were ordered to be housed in nursing homes and for the aged and the infirmed, despite the obvious and long known fact that the aged and infirmed are exactly the population most susceptible to respiratory infections. Yet the governor and state after state forcing nursing homes to place those sick with COVID in close proximity to most vulnerable people. Now, most people are not gonna see it yet, but by the end of this series, you will. There is, a, there is an undeniable effort of population control underway. When you look at the removal of food, the high energy prices, the intent to collapse the economy, the intent to be able to create a zero economic growth scenario. Um, all of those things ultimately lead to population control, especially when you have healthcare districts that are implementing every totalitarian means that they can, probably for money from the UN or from the Council on Foreign Relations, to be able to completely enslave you um, in every way that they can, implementing 5G and, you know, and scan retinas and, and fingerprints and all of these things, and as well as the ESG. We'll get into ESG too, by the way, by the end of this series. Um, so there's a lot of this stuff in this thing that we know where we talk about ivermectin and how they wanted to be able to deny uh, hydroxychloroquine. But if you're interested in the exhaustive source of the success of hydroxy and ivermectin, you can go to https colon backslash backslash or slash slash ivmmeta.com. Uh, for more information on that. Uh, the other thing to consider too is that the mRNA vaccines have been a health disaster, rapidly escalating tolls, and people are denying things like the, um, and uh, you know, people just suddenly kind of just falling over. And it's, a, it's weird that people are not willing to be able to connect the dots in that degree. Maybe they're scared because they somehow ended up taking the vaccine, and like many of my friends, they now regret it. Um, so uh, they have a steady, le steady level of unexplained deaths uh, in Germany and Switzerland, and they have twice the empirical standard of deviation. The excess death trend began in April of 2021, um, and they when they had an extensive vaccination campaign, and they had two effects of the vaccination. On one hand, decreasing excess mortality because of the successful immunization on, and on the other hand, an increasing mortality if the vaccine would cause side effects to form deaths. Now, many of us that are watching this video understand that they should smell a rat. Uh, they can smell a rat. They've done their research on COVID. Um, they've done their research on a variety of other elements. And so I don't, I'm not really interested in pushing this article so much because I understand that people understand kind of... Um, what's been going on with COVID because it's helped wake, and wake up a lot of people. Again, this is just part of the series to be able to help people connect the dots about what's going on and how COVID is actually part of it. COVID, COVID is actually part of changing our new normal to be able to fit into this sort of our global common future great reset, if you will. And hopefully you'll stick with me for the rest of the series. 
Um, and I think the next we're going to end up, um, we're going to end up talking about war. We'll end up talking about famine. We'll end up talking about why. Um, and then we'll end up concluding that part of the series. So this is going to be the first part of two parts before we move on to the actual third part, if that makes any sense. So I hope you guys have a good, good day. And I hope uh, that you find these um, entertaining and informative. Thanks.